What is a temporary injunction? My name is Andrew Ayers. I'm a business law and estate planning attorney with offices in Edina, Minnesota in New York City. And today we're going to talk about a very real and important legal concept for you to understand if you run a business. So when it comes to temporary injunctions, it sounds very intimidating, and in fact it really can be. This is the stuff that those TV dramas are made of when you look at legal shows. This is the fast moving things where somebody is shut down and we have all kinds of problems and it can end up being a plot for a movie. And if you receive paperwork with an injunction against you and your company, or if you're the one seeking that injunction, it's important from day one that you understand what that paperwork says or what you are seeking, what the effects are. Because a temporary injunction, once it's issued, is a formal court order. You can't violate it, because if you do, you could be subject to very significant penalties. So this is not something you don't want to take seriously. This is something that you want to make sure you understand and speak to the right professionals. So what a temporary injunction does is it says that somebody has to stop doing something. So for example, if you've created a product that infringes on somebody else's copyright or trademark, there can be a temporary injunction that says you can't sell your product anymore. You've got to get it all off the market. And if that temporary injunction is on March 1st and you sell a product on March 2nd after receiving it on March 1st, you could be in significant trouble with the court. You can't mess around with a temporary injunction. You have to make sure you understand what it says and what it's prohibiting you for doing. Now, the important part about a temporary injunction is this doesn't mean it's going to be in place forever. Now, the other side, the other party may ask for it to become a permanent injunction, meaning that you could never sell your product again. But a temporary injunction is normally a very short term fix to the problem. So that March 1st temporary injunction may only last until March 15th. And during that 15 day period, your role is to put together papers and work with an attorney to oppose it and tell the court why you shouldn't have an injunction against you, why you should still be able to be selling your product. If you're the one who's been wronged and you need to stop a competitor from doing something that's harming your business, you need to understand how are you going to be able to get an injunction. And this is a very important step in the process. You, on behalf of your business, probably can't just run to the courthouse and ask for an injunction. Because first of all, a business cannot be represented by somebody who's not an attorney. So your business probably has to hire an attorney and you want to hire an attorney who understands this so you can make sure you're getting your injunction paperwork filed correctly. You see, there's a lot of very specific requirements in your local, state, or federal court rules as to what it takes to get an injunction. And you want to make sure you're following those. You want to dot every I and cross every T because if you don't, then your injunction will not be granted. And when you're asking the court for that injunction, there's two different ways you can do it. The first is what's called an ex parte application. Now that ex parte application means you don't even tell the other side what's going on. You create an application, you file it with the court, the other party doesn't even know about it until after you've had a chance to be heard by the judge who says, you know what, there, there might be harm if they find out about it. Maybe they would destroy some products or something else would happen. So they can issue what's called an ex parte temporary injunction, meaning the other party didn't know about it in advance. So then the second way you can get it, obviously, is you can tell the other party about it. And what happens that way is you essentially create like a motion schedule with the court, knowing that you're filing for your injunction, the other party has a right to review the papers, file their own response, and then you can reply, and then a court can have a hearing and make a decision on whether or not there should be a temporary injunction against one one of you or the other one, or however it's going to work out. Um, so those are the two ways you can do it. Obviously, the first way is the really aggressive way, and it doesn't give the other party any time to be heard before the judge considers your paperwork. And a lot of times, that's the kind of injunction you're going to encounter, because people believe there's such big harm, there'd be what they call irreparable harm, if it wasn't immediately granted for the temporary injunction. So that's why people are running to court. When it comes to what you're going to have to prove in your application, this again is where each court is different. But generally, it's again this idea of irreparable harm, that if we don't have an injunction, if we don't immediately stop what's going on, then there'd be significant irreparable harm to you or your business. This includes showing that money wouldn't be enough to compensate you for all this. So let's say there's a lot more at stake than just money. You want to make sure you're getting that injunction. Another 
oftentimes requirement from the court will be that you actually even have to show that you would win in the end with the case so that you're even entitled to this relief. So we're talking here about the temporary injunction, which is the first step, and it's usually that short-term injunction. But you also have to be able to show in the long term that chances are you would be able to even succeed in the lawsuit. Because if you wouldn't succeed in the lawsuit and the court thinks you're just using this injunction to try to stop a competitor or to harass them, you're not going to have that injunction awarded. Another big concern for most of my clients when this comes up is how much is this going to cost? And unfortunately, that's really going to be a case by case basis as far as trying to figure out how much you're going to how much it will cost to file these papers. Um, your papers can be very small and very short. They can end up being voluminous with hundreds of pages. So the key to this one is find an attorney you know and trust and you understand what they're going to be filing for you and what that cost is going to be. Understand that it's probably not going to be a simple flat fee up front. Chances are it's going to be rather involved because you're going to be looking at your initial injunction papers. You're going to get the reply from the other side. You may want to reply. There may be a court hearing. And then that's just the beginning of the case. Once you're past that initial hearing, your lawsuit may go on for a couple more years while the court tries to sort everything out. So you could be looking at a couple of years of commitment to this lawsuit, and you need to understand that that will obviously cost money, and that cost will continue to grow as the lawsuit goes on. So we've kind of gone through a bunch of different areas on the preliminary injunction, and the final question people ask me is, you know, what do I do next? What should I do? Well, if you're looking for an injunction or a temporary injunction against somebody, the first thing you should do is talk to an attorney. You may think you have a clear-cut case, that there's no doubt in your mind that you'd be granted an injunction, and then the attorney may look at it and say, you know what, I've had five of these cases before, and none of them have been granted. So you may not be as likely to succeed on your case as you think it is. And that's where a professional can look at it and look at the case law and see what courts have done before you just run off and file an injunction. Because the other thing is, if you file an injunction and you lose, chances are the other side is actually going to ask for you to pay their counsel fees. They're going to say this whole thing was unnecessary, you've been doing it to harass me, and you've run up my counsel fees, and judge, I want you to make them pay for my counsel fees. So it's very important that you kind of know what you're doing and focus with a professional to put forward the best preliminary injunction application you can. Now, if you have more questions or if you're ready to get started or you're not even sure where to go with this, you can go to my website, andrewmayers.com. There's a red legal strategy session button. You'll be taken to my personal calendar. We'll set up a legal strategy session. It's a 15 or 20 minute phone call where we'll talk about temporary injunctions or other legal issues that you and your business are dealing with and try to give you a plan forward for some next steps and some best options for you. If you found this video to be insightful, I'd love it if you hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel. We're constantly putting out new videos in the worlds of business law and estate planning, and I hope to see you in our next video.